Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show where we take a look at Arizona numbers and today we're going to dip into the rental market just a little bit because we're seeing some numbers that might have some implications on the price of rentals and availability in a good way. So we're going to dip into that a little bit, some new data I got from the Cronford Report. And then as usual, we're going to take a look at our seven-day moving average and see where our listings are. Good morning from Mesa. Good morning back to you. Um, so... Right now we have a lot of volatility, so we're going to talk about that as well. And this morning in our seven-day moving average, um, that's kind of some encouraging news here. Um, we are up to 4,437 homes coming on the market with 3,990 going under contract. That number stayed relatively the same between 3,800 and 3,900. But now there's a 447-unit gap. We're getting more listings coming aboard, although it's not really showing up in the total yet. I track it a little bit differently. Um, but when I look at the MLS today, we still only have 4,958 homes available. But it's encouraging to me when you look up here and you see this gap. The red line is homes under contract. The blue line is new homes coming on. And I like to see that increase. I got a green line here because the last time we started approaching that many listings coming up, on seven days was way back here on October 2020. These big dips here are holidays. So this is October 2021. So this is um, um, Thanksgiving or Christmas, New Year's. So uh, encouraging. So let's hope that that keeps up because that's what we need. Prices can't adjust when inventory is low. There's just no its, ends, or buts about it. Had someone reach out to me this morning on my website asking if I thought that the month of May was a good time to sell a home. And I can tell you this year, absolutely. Um, normally, May is always good um, in the Phoenix area. People want to move. Uh, our schools start here about third week of July. So they want to list in May, get relocated and be ready to get into the new school district. So May is always good. Uh, the weather's always good in May. We reach our first 100 degree temperature probably about the second week of May. And uh, that's much better than 115, right? So May is good. Now, the reason I'm saying May is good this year is because inventory is down to 4,958. Sales are staying level at about 3,900. That number of 49 is going to have to quadruple before you even see any kind of effect at all. So I'm very comfortable in saying um, that, uh, that May is going to be good. Running at altitude, how are gas prices in the Phoenix area? They're going up, uh, not as much as California. I think uh, I filled up yesterday and it was 385, but I got a feeling this morning I'm probably going to be over four dollars. And I want to chit chat a little bit about that in a few minutes. So let's take a look at rent here for a second. And this is from the Maricopa Association of Governments, kind of a neat chart. This is showing that overall our rent percentage of change since Q4 2020 is up 28.6 just about running the same with home prices. So that's the median rent in Maricopa County. Evictions are going up, but they're going up because they were held down here. The rental moratorium kept landlords from making any changes. So uh, there were a lot of people out there that um, were not paying their rent, and they also didn't fill out the information to have their rent taken care of from some of the federal subsidies. So those are the people that are getting the boot. The people that did take the time to work with their landlord and get the federal subsidies have not been getting kicked out. So that's getting up there. But keep in mind, even before the pandemic, you know, evictions were running about 5,000, 5,600, 5,700 in Maricopa County. So that's not an alarming number. This one is uh, kind of a concerning number. This is cost-burdened households. So 31% of our homes are paying 30% of their income on housing expenses, whereas 14% are paying more than 50%. So we don't need that number to get much higher. That starts to cause some problems. So tell me, Rick, what's going on in rent? Now, this is a bit of an eye chart. I get it. I don't expect you to be able to read it, so I'll read it for you. And it says, although the resale and new homes market continue to show very little sign of weakness, the same cannot be said in the rental market. Hmm. Do tell. 
the vast majority of rentals do not hit the MLS. Let me explain that for a moment. Multiple listing services where real estate agents put a for rent listing on the multiple listing service for all agents to see. Most rentals don't end up there because um, you can get just the same results by putting a rental on Zillow. Uh, be careful on Craigslist, uh, but there's a lot of rentals that can be found there. So what I'm saying is this is a small sample number, but it's large enough to actually look at trends. So let's continue. The, um, However, the, the armless rentals database shows us that the market is nowhere near as favorable to landlords as it was this time last year, and here's why. Available supply is up 1,553 to 2,138 units, a rise of 39%, meaning tenants are getting more choices. There's more rentals out there. Rental listings are up 20% year-to-date compared to 2021, so supply is arriving faster. We need to see that happen in single-family New rental listings are up 29% over the past four weeks compared to 2021, telling us that increased supply trend is strengthening. The average lease price is $1.80 down from $1.93 this time last year. That's good. The average lease price peaked at $2.01 on May 2021, and it peaked again on at $2 July 29th, and then it's been falling. So it's saying increase. Interestingly, the supply of active listings varies a lot by dwelling type. Single-family detached homes for rent are up 99%. There are 1,546 versus only 777 this time last year. That's a good thing. Here's what's happening. There's been a lot of apartment buildings going on, going up. Take a look around Gilbert, um, even Phoenix. So uh, there is building to meet demand. As that happens, rent prices are going to stabilize. People are moving more towards apartments now versus single-family rentals because they've been priced out of the market. Now, investors that are holding these single-family rentals are going to be affected by people choosing apartments. Apartments will have to lower their rent or give offers and bargains if their occupancy rate gets over 10%. Right now, it's about 4 4.5%. 4.5%. So when that starts to happen, you'll see some billboards on the freeway, signs on apartments, first month free, stuff like that. If this starts affecting the single-family rentals, then investors are going to find someplace else to put their money. They're going to start putting their homes on the market. Now, let me give you a caveat. It said this is going to happen slowly. You're not going to see a huge influx of rentals come on the market. But this is an indication that we're starting to have enough rentals being purchased and that also includes these build-to-rent complexes that you see that we've never had before. They're all over the valley now. They're houses, little single-family houses that are built to be only rentals. And so, but the investors that are going out there scooping up these listings that you and I want, those are eventually going to be sold. So we have a comment from Pat here. says, even mold over molder, older mobile homes in my 55 plus, plus park are going for stupid prices and they're on the market for about a day or two, and people don't mind the ever-upgoing lot rentals. It's mind-blowing. Well, over 55 has a lot rental anywhere from $600 to $850 a month. If you go in and you pay cash for your for your modular home there, you've really lowered your expenses. Yeah, the lease payment isn't that great, but for people that like to travel or come here seasonally, it's a good deal. And I think a lot of that is spurred by the fact that Canada can now come down, and they've been locked out. So they're coming down and taking advantage of the weather once again. There's some creative things going on in the rental market. Let's look at what's going on here in Tempe. And this is a complex called the Dwell Apartments. So what they're doing is there's a company here, and it says an attempt to bring much-needed workforce housing to some of the Valley's most expensive neighborhoods. Holus, I don't even think I could say this right. Holualoa Company is taking a unique approach to mixed-use development buying office properties and infilling the site with apartment buildings. So what they're doing is they're buying this big office complex and then they're taking the rest of the building and converting it to studios and one-bedroom apartments to make it affordable for their employees. So the average employee is going to make $67,000 a year, so they want to make sure that workspace is affordable. And what they're doing is they're making these work at home places so even though the office is right there they're trying to build these 
apartments so that you've got great workspace inside your studio or your one bedroom for working at home or you can go down into the lobby where they've got other workspaces down there and a nice courtyard so you have your job right downstairs if you want to go down there and they can have affordable housing in the rest of the building now that's kind of a cool thing I don't expect to see that expand to the point to where wow we've got all this rent relief but those are numbers to watch watch the rental numbers and we'll be keeping them up to speed here because if those rental numbers start to change that's the first sign that there could be some changes in the real estate market now what the heck is going on with mortgages you may recall I said I had an agent call me once and ask me if my uh, client was locked into his interest rate because she said if we go into if, if Russia invades uh, Ukraine then rates are going to go through the roof and I just quietly thought to myself no because whenever there's turmoil there's a flight to safety so stocks will go down people will buy bonds when bonds go up interest rates go down was it right you know even a blind squirrel finds a nut every once in a while and here's what's happened staggeringly big rate savings as mark remains focused on ukraine look at the 30-year fixed rate on the top here folks 3.96 as of friday a lot of turmoil people are running to safety rates came down now there's a bunch of other stuff going on i think we need to be concerned about the first one is oil traders bet prices will pass 100 or 200 dollars a barrel this month that is mind-blowing Running at altitude, do you think price oil's expensive now? If we hit 200, it's off the charts. Party's over. So what do we? What's going on, and what do we need to watch for? Well, personally, I think the central bank. You know, three weeks ago, the argument was: Are they going to raise the overnight rate by 25 basis points or 50 basis points? What's the Fed going to do? So the market's trying to adjust for it. They already built in the interest rates, the mortgage rates, in anticipation of Chairman Powell raising the rates because he needs to tame inflation. Well, those tools have just been ripped out of his hands right now, folks. He can't do anything to control the price of oil. And oil's doubled. And he can't do anything to control the price of wheat, which has gone up 40% this week, last week. Those two things right there, wheat and oil, are going to increase our inflation numbers astronomically in the short to midterm. I don't see oil going down by by May. This could be tough. And uh, um, so looking at those numbers and trying to see how he's going to raise rates to affect interest rates to get some pressure going up so he can slow down the economy a little bit to get inflation to come down isn't going to work because our inflation is being dribbled, driven by war. It's being driven by global issues. Not to be, pretend I'm a big economist here, but that's a fact. So if oil goes up, that's more money out of your wallet. I know I'm planning a big trip in May, and it's uh, $1,700, 1,700 miles one way. So I looked at it yesterday, and I said, okay, if I'm driving 3,000 miles, and I'm pulling my trailer, and I'm getting 12 miles a gallon, and gas goes up to, I'm just going to say, 6 bucks a gallon, my fuel costs for that trip are $2,000. It was $1,000. It goes up any further than that, I'm probably staying home. <laughs> so... It's going to be a rough one to watch. So there's a lot of different numbers to watch to see how it's going to affect buying patterns. Can you now afford that mortgage? So that's I'm going to see. I'm going to say that there's going to be a little bit of a slowdown in that seven-day moving average that I'm seeing right now. If it starts crunching people that are qualified on a certain amount, but now their debt-to-income ratio goes up because of gas and food and energy. So it'll be interesting to watch. But having said that. We're down to 3.96. I'll bet you there's a run to go find a home this week because uh, that's below four, and it's that emotional, mental barrier that was, oh, it's over four. I can't buy. I just can't do it. So people are going to run out. So we'll see what happens. Hey, I've got an app. Uh, let me know if this interests you because everybody wants to know what their home's worth. So I put one in here. I just picked an address. Your estimated home is worth 809000 and it shows you what you paid for the home and how much you paid towards interest, and you get to play around with this. How much would refinance save you in interest? It sends you a monthly d digest. Tip, if you just pay 250 more bucks each month, you'll save 47000 Or if you just only pay, you know, $100, what happens? So you can learn all kinds of things about your home. 
and you can play around with these different scenarios. Your home has built 429,000 worth of equity. How could you use it if you wanted to pull it out, do a reverse mortgage or whatever you wanted to do? Um, if you rented your home on Airbnb, how much could you potentially earn? So it has that down here. It says this one will probably get you about 329 bucks a night. Uh, your annual revenue is 649 grand. And so this gives you a monthly digest. And it also has a very, uh, um, has my mug down in the corner giving you a video welcoming you to HomeBot. So if you're interested in something like this and you want to get a monthly report, just send me an email with your name and home address and I can set you up quite easily. A lot of numbers to watch this week. We got the employment numbers last week. They were good. It's going to be very, very interesting to watch interest rates this week. I don't see any upward pressure. Look forward to talking to Pat about it on Friday, but I don't see any upward pressure. And Carolyn says, BUM today. Great. Um, good to see everybody. Even though I can't see you, but I can see you in the chat. Have a terrific day. Take on the week. Thank you.